I see some footage yesterday. I don't know, some foolishness to that. Uh, that lippy guy, I don't know, whatever that clown does. I don't know, if I've ever seen a you that if I was someone's parent, I'd look at and be disgusted. It'd be that you, Lippy. Like, Lippy, do me a favour. We're in different worlds, we're in different places in life. Different existences, we just... And you do it all the time, like, you do this. And the worst is thing, you not talk about something as if it's the yid or an ender of life, like, it actually means anything to anyone's life. Like, the music entertainment business and what the what I should be grateful for for what link up and they they're not done. And and please stop antagonizing Rashid to want to be get himself into violence and all that. It doesn't matter how much Muay Thai or gym work my man does. He's a clown and you're clowns and you're all clowns. You're nerds who make videos. Stay out of real people's worlds. What I'm dealing with here is the fact that all the black platforms have been manipulating the generations for years and it's gonna continue with and I speak to grown people and actual real people about solving these problems. Not dickheads who jump in clubhouses and shape whatever the fuck it is you lot do. I got a clubhouse and I got a clubhouse to NFTs and crypto. You lot get in clubhouse to talk. At some point you're going to realise that your lives are shit. Like everything about your lives is shit and it has, I, don't, I don't want nothing to do with it. So please refrain from keeping me in your little world of clubhouses and whatever the fuck it is you lot do. Now let me stick to what it is I'm doing here, which is about people like Rashid and the rest of it that have been manipulating a generation for years. Because the truth of the matter is, how do I make music and now you own it? So you're telling me that I should allow that. The only reason this is happening because I'm the only one that's I'm the only one that said link up, give me back all my shit and I'm re-uploading it. That's why this is the only reason it's happening. So please stop trying to make this out as if it's something to do with me or Rashid or some argument. No. Here's the bottom line. They have been monetizing, copywriting people's music without permission. So just because you work with them and you need that life, because we don't need that life. Real niggas don't need that. I don't know what it is. Jump around on podcasts and act like nerds and clones. That's why I only done one podcast and I was my brother. The rest of you are fools. Huh? So please refrain me from that, Lippy. Because I and stop all that violence and boxing and all that crap. Okay, if you want to know what, what the real problem was, ask Rashi what the real problem was. And see if that adds up. Stop playing with me. We're not in the same worlds. And well, I wouldn't even engage you. One day I'm like, I don't know. Just leave me alone, please. Idiot. So, quick video. I just received a, had a good conversation with my brother Pounds. And he let me know that Rashi's going to be going on this show to um, basically clear his name. Now, unfortunately, and I, at first I was, I, I wasn't even, I was a bit annoyed. I thought to myself, I know he's going to go in there and he's going to make this about me. Mike's a madman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When well, actually this is fuck all to do with me. And I was hoping that this wasn't going to be a fact. Cause I don't know if you know, it's at this point we're just falling back because the lawyer is now doing his due diligence. He's got a company to contact. We've got things to do. Because like I like to claim to you now, my behind bars and all my stuff that's linked up TV has actually now totally been removed and via copyright by this company and everything still remains with the company as of the day I speak right now. So apparently he's answering all the questions. So there was a list of questions my lawyer sent to me for, to give to Pounds to ask him on the show. And I got them to Pounds too late. So we never got to ask him questions. But what I am going to do is the day this show airs, which I think is on a Sunday, I'm going to post these questions in the morning that are from my lawyer. So when you watch this show, if these questions aren't answered, then you know he's talking shit. If these questions that I post up are not directly answered, then you know he's talking shit. If he answers these questions that I post up, then great, I love the answers. But you're going to tend to find he's going to start talking like might sound mad but about an incident, which is what fuck all to do with the issue. Because the fact remains, if you have music on any one of these channels, and they got another company to administrate the finances, it means they collected the money. And if you never received the money, then it means you was entitled to it. If you never got an agreement, if you never got a split, a discussion, royalties, it means you was entitled to it. And that's the bottom line. So whatever you see on this show, I beg you, don't hit me up, drop me out, I'll wait for my lawyer to get what he's supposed to get back. Have a good day. So, uh, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna lie. 
The whole reason me and this Rashid guy has ended up in this place. See, when I spoke to his pals yesterday, I was incensed. Because when I spoke to my lawyer in the morning, I said to the lawyer, send me these questions because this clown's going to make it about me and him. He's going to make me up. And they're exactly the part that I don't do. See, the truth what you lot don't know about this whole thing is I'm doing it. This isn't for me. And as much as you might want to believe that or don't believe that, I don't particularly care. But I can promise you this isn't for me. This makes no difference to my career. Honestly. I never, you know, music money is, and I'm not even going to get into what, what it is and why we don't do what we do, but this makes no difference for my career. This, what I'm doing here, is directly for the knock-on effect of the generations coming up. And again, I'm, I'm we'll break that down later as far as, you know, like I said, if, if the youths knew that what their positioning was, they wouldn't be running around in a hyperventilated state having to kill each other to get their numbers up, you know, like that. So, and these, you know, I spoke, I had a conversation with one uh, guy at a record label and I asked him, I said, you know, what colour are you? He said, white. I said, what's your, what's your job? He said, you know, and this is a guy over at a big record label. He said, you know, to make money. I said, that's not their jobs. Their job is to take responsibility for their community. So whether it's Link Up, whether it's the other ones. And the only one that took, see, on this show, apparently he's trying to put Jamal in the same um, kettle as them. But Jamal's not in the same kettle as them. At all. Yeah? So... Because Jamal took responsibility. See, life isn't just about mechanisms. You know, like these lot will say, okay, well, we're, 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 life isn't necessarily about wrong and wrong, you know, it's not about wrong and right. It's about, you know, being in balance with nature. So all of these guys, their greed and manipulation of an industry has led the kids down this path. And they know it. So where they're supposed to take responsibility for a culture, they've done this. Now, as far as the actual reality and technicals, now the reason I'm doing this, I'm doing this for my sanity. Because you see, if I sit down and I watch Pounds' thing, and this guy is doing his, what he's been doing from the beginning of this, because what, what they do, they do coward games on it. It's like, you know, like that kid that used to get bullied in school, and all they have is antagonistic words, and then they like to antagonise, and they sit back and act like you're dumb, and sit back and act like you're, you're crazy. Oh, he's crazy, I don't know what he's doing. But yet, you know, we're making a song, a film about mum, we, we have a thing. So let me break down what actually happened in, in a break, in a quick encapsulation. So when you hear this, so when you see this, fucking idiot on this show. The part he's trying to get you to focus on will be the conflict and myself and him leading into it. So I'm gonna break it down quite clearly what happened. This guy phoned me about doing a song, a film about my mother. When he phoned me about doing a film about my mother, we've gone to record this film. But we started the process, but obviously, you know, it's the link up production, so it's not a real production. It's just a process. So we started this process. And as time's going on, this is a song about my mother. I'm writing bars in my head on a day-to-day -day basis. So you know what we're going through. So as we're storyboarding it, as we're laying out the film, I can't afford this to be shit. I can't afford this to be, no disrespect, a shy roll story. As well as it was done, it was not, it's not levels of what I'm doing. So I can't afford for this to be, this is something about my mother and her, and her death. So I can't afford for this to be a stupid project. So I'm saying to Rashid, listen, bro, pay attention. <laughs> So when he starts running out of money because he shut that edict thing, that process edict foolishness, he starts running out of money and having technical problems. So he starts stuttering. And when he starts stuttering, he starts not answering the phone for two weeks, not answering the phone. Like it went, it, I, I, I counted it. It was two and a half weeks the guy looked at an open message of mine and didn't reply. And he thinks this is fine enough for it. You're letting black, these, you know, these guys pretend they're white in front of you. Anyway, so anyway, that goes on. So it got to about week two and I turned around to Taddis, who is his cameraman, I said, Taddis, tell my man to phone me. Taddis is like, oh, I said, did you tell him the message? He said, yeah. I said, tell him to phone me. So my slip up was I'd done something which scared him very much. I said, there's a, you know, some quids out on the head back. And the youths are going to get paid to pick up Link Up TV cameras today. You know, like, <laughs> being asked, counting the money on, on the phone, saying, yo, here's, one, here's a grand for one you All they got to do is bring back MTV, um, Link Up microphones or link up cameras and they get paid because he's pissed me off to the to the extent you know and it was it was a disrespect that he had when he phoned me when he phoned me it was uh, i'm gonna hand it over to another producer because i don't like being spoken to like that and i'm thinking you just took the piss antagonizing me because you're broke and no nah, so i've gone mad so then we've ended up in that place and then leading up before that there was a, a u channel video and that, and on that uh, no, a, a video, aka YouTube, about AK, documentary about AKA, which I initially told him to take me off of it 
because I saw what Grand Daily's done with Grand Daily done with their originals where they I call it a lot of rewriting of history. There's a lot of people that act like the, it started with Grime and their, those guys when it didn't. So I said to him, take me off of it because I know that the, when it came to um you know U Channel, I was the most predominant artist on U Channel for about five years, more predominant than any one of the Grime artists. So I said, if you're gonna put me in that bracket, and I saw the trailer. The trailer I was in the trailer for like ten seconds, like not even like fraction of a second. I said, take me off the whole thing, bro. So then after I'd done that, he realised that he's got, he can't put this out without me on it. So he started to pretend he was my mate. And that's really, I think, why he phoned me and wanted to do this mother thing. So he started to pretend he's my mate. So then after that, when I tell him, I tell him, to, I tell him to pay me three grand or take me off of the, the U Channel documentary. He's like, and then this way starts being a tough guy. I'm not paying you no money. Fuck you. Yeah, fair, fair. He starts actually being a tough guy as well. I couldn't believe he was being a tough guy. Rashid, funny Rashid. So he takes me off of it. So I know this is now a dub. So if you if you want to do the timeline, you'll go back to the timeline when it first started. I'll turn around and said, Rashi, take me off of the thing. And you'll see it on, on my comment, on, the, on what I posted. So he's annoyed now. Now he's annoyed. I know he's annoyed because this, this this documentary was his baby. He'd been playing, he'd been filming it. Been, and all the artists know he'd been loving it, he'd been talking about it. He thought this was his break. Because what people don't know is Rashi, because they have, because of the situation which is now in front of you with the money and the, the, you know, the companies, he's been trying to turn into a production company and a content-based company for ages. That's why Link Up has been dissolved. Whatever reason he gives you on Pound Sterling Show, you only dissolve companies because of one reason, because got, they got took the court and they lost before. Or they settled out of court. And I can, that, that them documentations are with the lawyers. So the only reason I'm doing this, because I don't want to be wound up. I don't want to have to interact and engage and when I know I'm doing something for the community of my people. Because me, frankly, I don't give a fuck. Like, I've got my shit sorted out. I could spend the last months going around the internet just grab. I'm, I'm grabbing back all my things. Whether it's a fire in a booth, I'm grabbing back everything. Because I ain't signed no record deal, no license and deal with nobody. So I want all my shit. So, you know, I'm doing this for a reason. This is not, this is for the generations to come. I'm tired of the youths getting sent to the slaughter. I'm tired of it. And these little house Negroes are the reason why, because they're milking rather than helping. So, and there's other things that we're going to be throwing into this as well. Like, when this thing finally goes through, there's things that we're going to be putting it, like, me and my lawyer spoke about this before. Like, you know, uh, something we're going to put in Parliament, for instance, managers and record labels have to start taking responsibility for the acts that they sign. So if they go to court, the <laughs> manager goes with them. But anyway, so anyway, we get to this point with the YouTube channel documentary, with the YouTube thing, and he's annoyed, he's mad. I know he's going to take my videos down. I preempted it. That's how mad he was. And I phoned him, I phoned him and there's a girl who's working for me at the time, and she can tell you, I phoned her and said, listen, rip everything down because this nerd's going to take them down. And then as she's taking them down, the... They're coming. He's take, he's he's he's, blo he's blocking them. He's putting them on privacy. What he's going to say on the show? He's going to say to you on the show that the reason that the videos were put on private, the the reason the videos come up with his companies because he put them on private. And they said that's not the truth. That's not the truth because they they came down and been re-uploaded since. And my copyrights as of this moment are still with that company. So Ed, so so I'm just kind of giving because I don't want to sit down and watch this fucking program. And think I'm gonna have to go and do something that's not what I need to do to this bloody nerd because he's trying to antagonize man on that E that show. Like he phoned pounds for the show. I don't know whether pounds would say this, but he's phoned pounds. Pounds didn't phone him. So he obviously feels the need. He sat there and he's thought about a way of going around it. Apparently everyone's phoning him. Of course everyone's phoning you because you owe them money, bro. So whatever you're saying on that show that doesn't end with them getting a check, it don't matter, my nigga. But you're trying to hide the reality before we get the reality out. So before my lawyer has done what he has to do, before we've contacted, before we've got to the bottom of who it is and, what, and, and why they're allowed to, you're trying to jump out in front because you, you, you're getting scared for your head back. But anyway, so that's how we got here. We got here because of that. We got here because my man, like I said, he got to a point and I threw a couple of quid on his head for taking liberties. So he's been scared ever since and he's been doing this. But as he's doing it, I've said to him, bro, I'm going to expose the whole thing, you know. So basically, when I then get the videos, I take the videos down. I then tell, tell jo Joey, and Joey has to vouch this. If Do Joey don't vouch for this, Joey's got a problem. I don't come and lie for your mate, bro, and you know the truth. And you're the one that's telling me that Rashid's got mental issues. Rashid's not well. Joey? Yeah. So anyway, um, he... Um, I put the videos back up and before I put them back up, I say, yo, make sure the digital stamping of everything's done. 
And I mean this for the behind bars, because I know they monetize the behind bars. And I know they, I knew they monetized that. I didn't know they was monetizing. So what I didn't know, they was monetizing other music. I knew they were monetizing behind bars and all the rest of it. So when I uploaded all my music, all my copyrights, all of them, not just the behind bars, goes to this company. So I phoned Joey like, Joey, will you not then take my fucking, take the, take the copyright off of my shit? Joey's like, Mike, it's being done. Remember, this is the reason it's happened with me because even when I spoke to Powell yesterday, Powell said, yeah, this happened to him before. Like, he's put a thing up and it's come up. And that's probably what they're going to talk about on the show. But I brought it down to Powell's, not the same thing. What happened to you was because you took the video from their channel. What's happening to me is the actual copyright's been given away. So if you would have looked at the video when you re-uploaded it, you would have seen the copyright's been given away. Because there's no other way they can administrate it unless they've got full control of the copyright, bro. They don't, they're not going to do the business otherwise. Do you see where I'm coming from? So that's how it works, bro. They're not going to do the business unless that's, unless that's the case. So they know what they're doing. And they're about, he's about to sit down and bamboozle you like a whole lot of talk and make it about me and crap jokes and do this. Like, Mike's a madman. Mike's angry. Mike's not angry. Mike's far from angry. Mike's life is wonderful. And this is a, a narrative some of these nerds need to stop running with. My life is wicked, bro. You come around, man, humbly. Humbly. No one's angry. We just don't like you lot. All right, so let me take you through this one more time. Yeah, this is today. Because this guy's going to sit down on Sunday with pounds and talk a bunch of shit about an argument and me putting money on his head or some dumb shit to why he's been teething everyone's copyright. See, I want to break this up real quick. There's two incidents. The argument I had with him has fuck all to do with him stealing your copyright. So this is as of today. So let's have a look at this. Here again, we go. Scorcher's video. Mike GLC and Scorcher. Okay, as you can see. Let's go along to the copyright claim. And we have... There we go. They still own the copyrights of this song. They cannot be monetized. Okay, that's the song link up. They're claiming that they haven't stolen any money from anybody. Cool, cool, cool. So here's my buying bars, which again, being monetized was never discussed with me. There was never no discussions. And again, I don't know whether I'm the first person to actually officially take a behind bars from them, which I assume it is. So now, on top of everything, these can't even be shown. And guess who's got them again? Guess who's got the copyright? The company they're claiming don't take the copyright. Yeah. But these are, they've actually just took my music and my material. So my spoken word on there these lot are now trying to take as their right. That's what they've done. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But this guy's gonna sit down and say he's not doing this or not. So all you fucking stupid artists, sorry to even get caught, you're dumb, you're phoning my man. I'll tell you, here's a quicker way of looking at it. Go to your Link Up TV video, press play, and if an advert pops up and you've never received no money for that video of Link Up, you're getting robbed. How how much not rocket science is that? I don't know what's wrong with these fucking artists. But anyway, I'm going to go and do a my thing. So if you're going to listen to my man's foolishness on Sunday, because the reason I don't want to see it, I'm trying to keep a cool head while I'm doing this. But like I said, this man's going to talk about mics, angry mics, this mics, that. And I told Pounds that's going to annoy me, but we're going to get through it. And then we're going to, we're going to deal with it accordingly. But Link Up TV from this day is officially over. If you place a video on Link Up TV, there's something wrong with you. And... If you've got a video on link up and you're, you're not asking them for your for your money, don't ever phone my phone again, Clark. We don't talk to people like you. You know, like that. So, yeah. Come on. It's time to start man up now. Reform. This is the start, Carl. And is this who you lot are crowning as your... <sighs> um, yeah, morning. This guy's trying to get me arrested because I'm trying to tell you lot that they're robbing your money. So I'm going to kind of fall back as far as like, because a friend said something to me yesterday. Um, I don't know if I can't say it's a friend, but I can't say it's a man who seems to concern, you know, be concerned with man's well-being. He said to me, Mike, you got to realise, and this is a man who runs a big, one of the other platforms is not doing this. He said, Mike, you got to realise these lot have got an audience and they're going to keep on playing to that audience on the internet and keep on trying to make it out. If you're crazy, you don't know what you're doing. Rear to tear. So you got to fall back because this Rashi guy will get you sent to jail. And even when, even when this, I first found out he was doing this interview, the pounds can be out because I went absolutely crazy. And I went crazy because, and I said to pounds, I said, pounds, 
giving this guy a platform to trivialize the robbing of a culture for the last 10 or so years, you're actually depriving the youth. Like we say, we're all here for the youth, but you're actually depriving the youth of a proper investigation. Because what will happen is that if he starts taking personal shots at me on this podcast, I'm going to get so pissed off, I'm going to say, fuck the whole thing and just deal with my man. Because I want that to take frustration. Because legal, legal's not quick, bro. When you're doing legal investigation, like if you've been caught, I don't know how much months is it between each court, each hearing? Six, seven months sometimes. We've got real things to do. There's something happening here. But that's a whole different thing. So, was, so as far as sitting down watching him do the shit, he's trying to get my nick, bro. He's, there's a video of when me and him had the argument. Yeah, I've fucking done something stupid. I put my hand in my drawer and whipped some money out. I said, bro, I, I put this on your head today. Like a donut. But now he's running around with his, with his video, showing it to people, bringing it up as a, as a topic and making this the reason to why he's doing what he's doing. So what he's actually trying to say, so he's, this is a few things he could be trying to say to you. He could be trying to say to you, like, I have the power to do what I want when people upset me. Or he's lying, one of the two. So my point is, I'm going to fall back as far as engaging. Because they're, they're just going to draw me out between a lot of them. Um, and I want to stick to the facts. I want to get to the facts. But what I do want people to ask today, and I want everyone to hit him up and ask him this. Because uh, Powell's already told me some of the things he said. And the public's not going to know that he's lying for a little while until we do what we're doing to actually give you the solid evidence that he's there telling lies so like I said if it, all of his questions don't result in people got paid then something's wrong now I want you lot to ask this I want you to hit up Joey and say Joey you see when people sign up for hardest bars you offer them splits don't you and even Joey splits is funny it's like some freeway fuckery which doesn't make no sense to me like I said, I've never seen a freeway split in my life. That's when they're all fucking jingles. Joey's got some split where he gives that like... And anyone who's done a hardest bar will tell you, he gets some percentage, the company get another percentage, and you get a percentage. So that's some idiot change. That's not real. Joey does that. So if Joey does that for hardest bars, you actually ask Rashid who's paid for, for behind bars. Because I've never received a check for behind bars. And right now they own my behind bars, which was ne which is not legal. So I don't know what he's trying to protect himself from because there's nothing you can protect yourself from because the evidence is there. So trying to make this about me is just nuts. But anyway, that's where we are. So I'm going to fall back from saying that. I want you lot to ask Rashid and Joey. And anyone who got paid for a behind bars, send me a DM. I'd, lo I'd love to be interested to see who got paid for a behind bars. But anyone who didn't get paid for a behind bars, go and fill out the form and stop being cowards. Okay, I just want to give a quick contents to the show today. Yeah, because Rashid's going to go on this show and tell you lot that he's not teeth and he's not selling your copyrights onto another company. Okay, so this is my son, Mother. And on my son, Mother, this is the company that Jamal put me with, who Rashid's also going to claim today that they use the same company. They do not. This is the company that Jamal put me onto. This is what Jamal done for me on behalf of Mike GLC. Okay? So... The company that Rashid claims that they use, that Jamal uses, is this company. Okay? As you can see, it is not in claim for my DLC. In fact, that's been blocked, which is behind bars. So I can't use that anyway, so that's my intellectual property gone. So let's take video. Like I said, I've shown this video numerous times, a scorcher video. Yeah? Again, never produced by Link Up, never made, not even shot by link up all it was done was placed on their channel let's go to copyright claim there you go and it's this is today this is it was a june 26th sunday so this guy's gonna sit down today and tell you that he's not teeth in you lot's money i don't know how stupid you lot are see i want to break down what's happening see the reason rashid's trying to paint a picture of me so he can get the audience who don't actually know me, because if anyone actually knows me, then they know that none of these fools are smarter than man. So he can get the audience that don't actually know man to believe that I'm a stupid person making a stupid, that doesn't understand the mechanisms of YouTube. This is what he's going to try to convince you of now. So the, and him and Pounds are going to come up with some, this is flagging. It's just flagged because I took it from his station and he still has it uploaded on his station. He put it on private, so it got flagged. So I want to make this very clear as you listen to that reason that this is not flagging flagging is what it says flagging copyright claimed it comes off once you notify somebody this is a copyright that has been utterly claimed so that is actually a separate 
scenario to the scenario. So that's the first place they can hide, that they can live in. So if someone finds out they're doing it, then they can say it's been flagged. And then what they're going to try to say is that Pound's going to say this has happened to him before. Oh, I put it on my station. But Pound, did you ever clip the money for that song that you put on their station? That's when you would find out that the company have the copyright. This isn't some simple answer. This is a mechanism. This is a company that know what they're doing. And he's engaged with a company that at this moment in time still own my copyrights. And the reason this is happening with me, because you can imagine no one's ever pushed him this far on it. That's why. He could have told someone he's took the flag off and they would never have known. And the deal that he has with the company, it's obviously impossible to take it off. If not, mine would quite clearly be off. Do you think I'm worth this much amount of hassle to him? So if he couldn't take them off, why wouldn't he? Because he can't. So that means they've been sold. And I'm hoping that's not even the complete answer. I'm praying to God that's not the complete answer. Because believe it or not, I don't actually want to be doing all this. I just want my music back initially. Now I want you lot to know what the mechanisms behind these people are doing. But when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done at the end of tonight's session, so if the answer to it is, well, yeah, they administrated our stuff, Where's the money? If the answer to it is no, they haven't administrated our stuff, then why are they on all the videos and why are they, why have you like clearly stated before that they do your administrations? If you say differently tonight, we have the evidence to say differently. So either which way, take all these into consideration when you listen to this guy speak tonight. Because quite frankly, I don't want to be engaging for the rest of the week. This is why I'm doing this now. We've got shit to do. Let's start on our own music then. You feel me? Yeah. Another one of these angry mornings, just waking up bitter and hating the world. So I watched this thing yesterday, and obviously exactly what I told you he was going to do is what he's trying to do. But it's also worse than I thought it would be, bro, in a sense of like, he's lying more than I thought he would be lying. I thought he would be lying, you know, the whole personal attack in me. For starters, he's telling you a lot of situation that didn't even go that way. Let me let me and let me let you into something. I've never ever phoned up Link Up and asked Link Up for anything in my life. I've never phoned him and asked him for a scenario. I've never phoned him and asked him for a show. I've never phoned him and asked for nothing. When I said take me off of that U Channel DVD, I meant it. I didn't want to be on it. I don't want to be involved in the writing of UK history of hip hop because it's not real. And no, there is a truth which has been hid from you lot for years because certain situations have better friends and whatever, whatever. But that's another not argument. So as far as wanting to be on his U Channel documentary, yes, I told him, yes, I told him to take me off of it. And yes, I told him, if you don't pay me money, take me off of it. Like he would in any normal production, number one. So yes, if you're on that, he owes you money. That's it, bottom line. See, this one I'm trying to say, these clever tricks that they've been doing for years. And I did say to him, and the thing is, what are you, what are you like, don't realize, what I'm doing to them now, I could have done at any given time. We could be doing it to any one of them except one. None of them have been playing by the rules. So we're going to get to the issue. The personal attacks, I don't know, that's just nuts. All the mics, phone and my phone. Like, bro, I'm so glad we never done that project. I never wanted to do the project with you in the first place, and you know that. See, what he's tried to do is make something seem as if it's something else. When this guy first started phoning me for these projects, I, not, like, I didn't want to do it, bro. And when he very first started, the very first week he started his Rashid antics, I turned around to him and said, bro, if you're going to do your Rashid thing, we're not doing this because I'm not doing this on this project. And yes, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning. That's, when I wake up before, I wake up at four. And my days were like this. I do my artwork from four to eight. I have my breakfast, go back to doing more artwork, Stop that at about 11, then I have an hour I call the devil's hour, and I phone everyone I don't like. And then I cut that off, and then I get my mind ready, and I go to the gym, and I come back, and I reset, and I make my money at daytime. Like, if you don't do anything about life or philosophy or anything, you would understand that this is what we do. So me phoning this fool first thing in the morning was on request, because that's when he messaged me. So all that he's doing there, what he's actually telling you is who he is. Not what was being done. Bro, do you think uh, we're growing around Clark Man? You think if I phone your phone, I need to phone you back? There's not a man breathing on the face of the earth that I need to phone more than once. 
that I have any interest in speaking to. We was making a project about my dead mother and the creative times I work in between are in between four and eight o'clock in the mornings. That are the creative times that I work. You and I both know that you got the scripts and we inter engage through those times. So you, when you started having your mental, mental issues as you do, as Joey already knows you do. And that's another thing because Joey knows that I was going to let this go if I got my rights back. When we first fell out, we left it, didn't we? Then I said, okay, when I get my rights back, and we went through this little, and I'm going to show all this to Joey, you're fucked. I don't know what you're going to do, because I'm going to be showing everything. So I hope you, the way you're not showing everything that happened, I hope you're not doing that. Like the whole putting money in here, because you blatantly know that's not how it went, bro. You blatantly you know that's not how it went. No one didn't just whip out and say, I'm putting 10 bags on your head. What kind of fool does that? Do you know what I'm talking about? The type of level of antagonism a man has to get to before he does something that's all recklessly stupid. What, we're just stupid, though. I look like I'm not stupid, bro. Fucking guy. He lives in fantasy land. So the narrative he's telling you is, Mike's so rageful, he wakes up angry because I didn't answer the phone, he put 10 bags on my head. What kind of sense does that make to an adult's world? Like I haven't been jailed, like I haven't stood in court for false imprisonment or kidnapping or, 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 or things that would give you triple, like double figure cake. Like, do you think that's what we do, bro? People never actually stood in courtrooms. You think that's what we do for no reason? Think to yourself the extent I'd have to get to to be so fucking dumb. And you can laugh at all the fight. I've got more money than everyone in that fucking room keep on laughing at me. And pals knows what I'm saying. My money's more than good. I don't want to talk dumb shit. I'm about 10 grand in five. It's all dickheads. Anyway. You might have seen fivers in that stack somewhere. I don't know. You know, fibers do come in 100 reps sometimes, you know, though. Fucking clowns trying to laugh at something. You know you're blank scared. You're scared for your life, and then you were scared for your company. Now, the whole thing about your company, you know your company's finished, bro. And there's only one reason you delete, you, you dissolve companies. We know this. There's only one reason you dissolve companies, bro. You don't dissolve companies for other reasons. So all the answers that I wanted, you haven't answered any of them. You know you haven't. You made it about me. And all you blogs that's trying to talk up Mike's side of the story, Mike, this ain't to do with Mike and Rashid, bro. There isn't a Mike and Rashid. Rashid done what he done. What he's trying to do is cleverly act as if what's happening with my videos is a result of his self-action. And even then, he's still breaking the law, but he's going for the lesser of the evils. He doesn't want you lot to know he owes you money because he won't be able to afford to pay you back. The minute he has to pay you lot back, he's rubbed. And that goes for all of them. Bro, they replaced business with arrogance. That's the truth. They don't know what they're doing. See, some of this is about they didn't know what they was doing. That's what some of this is about. But now I'm going to stay on all your nuts. And now all of you lot might come down. So what you're going to have to do is pay everyone that you've ever shown a video to for the last 10 years. Because that company, we're going to be hitting that company and asking them where the money is. So we're going to see you where the money is too. And things like the Benny Banks, that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's a hundred of those. What it is, what they're going to do is rely on the 70% that they do straight business with who's got record deals and labels and all the rest of it. And then there's a third percent, I call this the basement buckets. The people they're never expecting to take their videos back. The people they're never expecting to claim their copyright back. They've already sold the catalog. The reason they can't get this back, the reason my videos cannot come back, he's gonna act like he's done on purpose, but he hasn't. Because the reason this happened, and what he's, and what he's also failing to give you lot, is that in between this happening, he's, he's making it out to be like one chain of events, like we had an argument and led to this, no. And Joey's going to have to prove this, or if not, Joey's going to have a real big problem. Like a real, real... Joey's a more problems than Rashid at this moment, because Joey's telling blatant lies. So that period of time, um, you know, I left it. I wanted to get the rights back to my music. So Joey's going to show you. Joey, you're going to show these as well. You're going to show these, Joey. Joey's got the messages saying, bro, tell him to get my, back my rights and we'll be cool. Bro, tell him just to get back my rights to the music and I'll be fine, I'll leave this long. Bro, tell him to get, my, get me the rights to my music. Tell him to get the rights. And then it got to the point where Joey kept telling him it's being done. He's sending me emails. He's sending me this. It's being done, Mike. It's being done. Send this email to the company. Tell them what songs it is. Take the songs down. Re-upload them. I've done everything Joey asked me to do. Didn't I, Joey? Didn't I, Joey? Joey's in so much problems. I can't wait until I see Joey. So I told, I told everything, Joey... And Joey went through it, and then it got to the point where Joey couldn't do it. He said, I don't know what they're doing, mate. He's gonna... And Joey's exact voice, man. We're going to show, we're going to air all of this. So, Joey, you need to come out and start being honest with really soon. So, Joey's exact emails, mate, you're going to have to do what you're going to have to do. So, I said, bro, if I don't get my shit back, I'm taking you to like, court. Mate, you're going to have to do what you're going to have to do, you know, because nothing I can do. So, here we are. So, this picture of Rashid trying to paint you, it's just not real, bro. And he's doing it to protect So, well, that might put money on my head, and this is why I can't deal with that. Bro, Mike got to that situation way... Mike got to that point way after. Way after. 
So, bro, but we're going to deal with it on my brother's thing. We're not going to do Pounds' thing because we're not doing no back and forth tit for tat. It's not about me and him. We're going to spend about 10 minutes on my brother's thing talking about you. And then, after we finish talking about you, we're going to move on to what the actual problem is. Because what you lot are actually doing is rubbing the use of an education. That's the real truth. And that's what I want to get to. I don't give a fuck about you. You lot are a bunch of tramps and I don't know what you're doing. Cameramen picked up cameras and got, you know, rich rimming off everyone's copyrights. And now... People want to know what's happening. The area of the cameraman's over. That's the bottom line. The camer cameraman got rich. You know, the music industry works in technology. It doesn't work in individuals. And all that trying to mimic... But I'm going to tell you a lot of the real about the CDs, really. You're going to know the real. You think I sold 250 plus boost? <laughs> That's what I sold of mine. I'm going to make you know the real. And all that clever mic do. But it's not acting like when you saw mine. And that's what Pound's like. I don't know what Pound's like. Hey, Mike, give me a C. Doug, Mike, give me a blood. You saw mine out there with about 20, 30 years. Like it was me standing in the set with a ton of... Anyway, so, and that Doug guy, I don't know, bro. I'm gonna rub that in. I'm gonna work for the trains and all that. But anyway, boom. Keep playing. Because your whole world's about to change. <laughs> of facts and reality. The game's about to get given back to those that's supposed to have it. And the main thing this guy's playing on is what he's done for you. So, what, you know, all the artists who aren't saying nothing is because they believe that if they speak up, they can't deal with Link Up ever again. So as long as Link Up, people like Link Up hold that monopoly, it's going to be very difficult to get to the reality. See, all these artists, I'm not saying nothing. I would love for you to ask them, where's the checks they got from Link Up for the videos that they have that's got millions of views on there? But they're fine with that. They're going to tell you they're fine. Like Pound said yesterday, you know, we're fine. It's a two-way trade. But yes, yeah, two-way trade. But the truth of the matter is, you're still supposed to be notified. We, I, I've got a strong feeling that I know what happened now. Now I'm watching that. And watching what I know this company to be, he said to you, he's been with the company for over 10 years. He said to you, Jamal used to use them, which they never did. That was a blatant lie, which you've proved. But I've got a strong feeling on what's happened, but I can't say it yet. For many, many reasons, we can't say it yet, but we've got a strong feeling on what's happened. And I will tell you this, it's all cap. Everything he just told you is a straight... Like, you know, get, I'll be honest with you, like, watching that interview, I know, remember, we know what's going on. So when we get to like really definitively get into the meat of it, we don't know. But we do know that you lot are going to continue to have this. You know what though, for the sake of bounce. <laughs> we all do a bounce. Hey yo Doug, some of us can bench four plates without the belly hanging over our dick. <laughs> so do me, like the whole thing about the digital stamping as well. Like, I really want to confirm that that's clear. Because when I upload those things, I don't want to see no funny shit, like no copyrights going to link up. When I upload to Spotify and all that, I don't see no funny shit. Like, if my mum wants me to just be cool, everyone wants to be cool, because I didn't want to chat no more shit with, to this guy about, like, fuck it. Like, bro, <laughs> trust me. Talk he was keeping, but we've all got friends. Back in those gags, back in all that, all that tough talk he was keeping, but we've all got friends. Back in those gags, the friends can't help him with this one. Beckham understand, man, not living that stick against the world with him, bro. There ain't no friends that can help me once I apply pressure, bro. And make him know that clearly, you know, but my thing's not like everyone else's thing. Make him.